Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 43 of the Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. Today's episode is No $25 Does Not a Life Coach Make. Oops, there's the phone. Sorry about that. Um, so here's what started, and I'll just warn you, uh, it, it's a ranty kind of day. <laughs> So I just recorded episode 42 because I was fired up about a little something, something. And um, this one might teeter off into the ranty wilderness as well. So if you're not interested in hearing me, um, you know, step up on a soapbox, um, you might want to listen to something else today. So here's what was, uh, here's the other thing that had me fired up today. Because periodically that happens. (laughs) I get fired up. So I keep seeing this ad, and I actually posted uh, uh, posted this on Facebook. I'm actually just looking it up here. Because I keep seeing this ad for a $25 life coach certification. And every time I see it, I'm like, what in the ever-loving history of humankind is that? really burning my waffles so I was like I can't I can't even believe that because I know that probably a lot a lot a lot a lot of people are paying $25 for a bunk piece of paper and maybe a workbook or something that then you know feels that adds credibility that this is not a judgment on the people doing that because most of the people who uh, pursue that are, uh, they need to make some money and they want to serve. Gen- I genuinely believe that people get into coaching because they truly want to serve. I'm sure there's some reptiles out there that get involved because they think it's easy money. Let me tell you that it's not. <laughs> but, you know, generally people want to serve. So that it comes from a good place. What makes me angry is um, <clears throat> the people who exploit that desire, the people who have made it seem that, oh, uh, you don't have a job and you, you don't have any skills, well, be a life coach and just give people advice. Coaching is not advice giving. That's Dear Abby, and you can get advice from Dear Abby for free. You can get advice from your friends for free. Uh, you don't have to go to a life coach to get that. And if you're the person who people are always coming to for advice, that doesn't necessarily mean you should be a coach. It means you probably should explore the idea. Because if people have been doing that to you your whole life, then you know, you're know you probably a projector who's meant to be a guide. <laughs> so you know, get on track with that. But please, for the love of buttered toast, do not pay $25 for a life coach certification. Come on now. So anyway, I, I keep seeing that ad and it makes me want to scream. So I'm, I, I am not a fan of regulating the hell out of everything. And I don't think coaching should be set up like a mental health therapist or, you know, I was even against and still am having to license social workers. If you go through a good program, you shouldn't need to be, you know, hooked into a money-making system for the state and for people who provide continuing education credits. (laughs) And also, we have the $25 life coach certification problem. Which is only a problem for me at the moment because it it really was like, wow, that's going to create some big openings for people to not get what they need and potentially end up more traumatized than they were to begin with. So anyway, my background is from being um, a social worker for decades and a therapist, and I specialized in trauma, mental health, and addictions. I never got my addictions certification because I was too lazy to send in the paperwork. Um, But so that means I bring a different skill set to the coaching relationship. I do not do therapy. That's inappropriate. It's called beyond the scope of your practice. It's not your role if you're a coach to do therapy. 
The tricky part is knowing the difference and when you need to refer a client for therapy and when it's okay to coach them and when it's okay to do both. Because sometimes somebody can be doing their trauma work with a therapist, with a therapist, and um, you can be helping them apply that learning in their daily life. You can be helping support them in working on their mindset and the, you know, the details of changing their beliefs. So you can do both, uh, in my opinion. Now, some therapists might disagree and not want you to work with a coach at the same time, but, so you'd need to explore that. However, the point is I don't do therapy as a coach. But because I've been a therapist, I know exactly when it's time to stop coaching and time to refer to therapy. Um, when you get into deep trauma, a therapist, a trauma, a, a trauma-centric, a trauma-certified EMDR therapist is going to fix you right up. And it's going to be a whole lot faster than talk therapy. And it's going to be a million years faster and more effective than coaching. Someone starts disclosing deep trauma, you need to bring that to a close and refer with all the kindness and compassion that you have for anyone going through that. Deep life-threatening addiction, that needs rehab. That needs a, an addiction specialist. Um, deep traumatic incest memories popping up, that's a time for therapy. That's not an appropriate place for coaching. If you're going through some deep shit, you need to be with someone, and a, a live other human body to help ground you as you explore the things coming up. That should not be done over the phone. Or by, or by Skype that needs to be with someone who has the certifications and skills to hold the space for you to grow and explore inside of, to create such a strong container that you're held steady while you're unsteady. Okay. Um, I don't, I also don't give advice. Coaching is not advice. And, and, and just again, you know, these are my opinions, my operational definitions, the way I describe things. So if you come into working with me, this is what you're going to get. Not everybody thinks this way, obviously, or we wouldn't have $25 <laughs> life coach pieces of paper flowing around. Um, lots of coaches feel like they can handle traumatic therapy. I disagree. And I, what, what, what's bothersome and potentially dangersome about that is they don't know what they don't know. Such good intentions, such beautiful big hearts, but they don't know what they don't know. And so they're missing things. And they're not offering tools and skills that come with that knowledge and experience. Because, again, no blame. I'm trying to bring it to your awareness that this is happening and you need to self-check. Check yourself before you wreck yourself or somebody else. Okay, so when you've been a therapist or you've been through an intensive, high-quality, probably expensive coaching program, if you paid $500 for your coaching program, I'm sorry, you didn't get... No offense to you or your teachers, but you didn't get the level that you w need if you want to be in this industry, in this field for a long time. Because a lot of what you learn is your own self-preservation. And you learn boundaries. And you learn to spot quickly when someone has a, you know, when they're on the continuum of a personality disorder. And that's also not a place for coaching. So knowing how to handle projection when your clients are throwing their shit all over you and you have to know that it's not yours and you have to reflect it back and say, hey, this isn't mine. This is yours and let's explore this. Let's talk about it. Let's have ourselves a teachable moment or 17. Knowing how to cut off the story and go to the issue in a way that doesn't shut people down permanently. I try to remember, and I'm not always good at it, but I try to remember to warn people. When we're in a session and I cut you off, I'm cutting you off for a reason. And I'm cutting you off because your story is leading you astray. You're walking toward a cliff and you're about to fall off it. 
because your story has blinded you and I'm going to cut you off and we're going to go to what's really happening because within just a few minutes I can tell you what's really happening and whether or not you're ready to hear it is another topic and sometimes that takes time but if you're with a good coach that coach knows right away within just you know five minutes what's actually going on because humans are very predictable and we're terribly not unique we all suffer from the disorder of terminal uniqueness but we're not unique at all we're actually pretty cookie cutter and there's only a handful of issues and they show up wearing different faces and you know different uh, configurations but the core of all of them is just a handful of things so it's not even some magical psychic ability. It's just having worked with people long enough to go, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that thing. And let's explore how it manifests for you. But the core of it is this thing over here. And so we're not going to spend your valuable time and money on a lot of storytelling. Especially if you've come to a coach or even a therapist for help with victim thinking or terrible limiting beliefs and then you argue the whole time <laughs> you argue and fight and defend your uh, victim mentality or your bad your uh, not bad but your uh, limiting beliefs and you argue about it that's going to get you a referral <laughs> or it's going to keep you in a relationship with an unhealthy coach who is colluding with you and that's another thing. You've got to know when not to collude with someone. Sometimes a therapist or a coach will like come alongside your belief system and kind of gently push you, guide you, show you the way to another road that you can walk. It's not always direct confrontation. And that's part of the skill that you need. You need to know when to say, hey, I'm calling bullshit on your fucked up story. And when you say, hey, I'm going to re repeat to you what you just said. And I want you to let me know what you hear in it. <laughs> and we're going to take a soft and circular meandering approach. Okay, a, an experienced coach is going to know how to do that. A $25 coach is going to say, let me give you some advice. Let me tell you what to do. That disempowers you and, frankly, it disempowers the advice giver because they don't ever get to have the experience and the joy of skillfully guiding someone to their own breakthrough, to their own aha, holy shit, I'm awake for a moment, moment. I would never want you to miss that. And you're going to miss that if you don't have the training. And there's no experience on the planet that's like that. When you... When you know that you did the guiding, but you give them all the credit because they did the actual heavy lifting, that's a beautiful experience to have. We need to know how to support people without enabling people and there's such a difference you can support someone through lots of questions and holding space and poking in the right areas to increase the opportunity for those awakening moments those aha experiences supporting people too often means supporting their stories and and making them feel better but not necessarily waking them up. When you have someone deeply stuck in uh, seeing the world as an adversarial place and interpreting every interaction as an attack, it's hard to break through. And sometimes you might have to refer to therapy for that. But a lot of times you have to not support. You have to never agree with that. Because the second you agree with, yes, the world is a terrible place, and let me tell you about my experience that matches your experience, you're way off in the weeds, and nobody's getting nothing except reinforcement for the very behavior that they came to you to help fix or change or transform. You've got to know when you can go no further. 
I used to tell my clients, if you come to me, my private clients, if you come to me and you don't have a tangible change in three sessions, and you, if you're not feeling better, then I'm not the right therapist for you. We're a mismatch or you're not ready. So you need to go explore that. And here's some names that you can move on to because I'm not going to endlessly meet with someone who's not experiencing some kind of change. The change can be slow and incremental and periodically microscopic, but change needs to be happening or you need to refer. I have a huge problem with therapists who keep clients in treatment for 20 years so that they can finance their um, annual vacations but the person is not actually getting any better. It's not okay. It's unethical. So you have to know when to refer. You have to know when to hold space. You have to know when to confront, when to cut off, and when to, you know, align with your client's story temporarily, momentarily, so you can guide them into awareness and guide, emphasis on guide. You're not an advice giver. You're not a card reader. You're not there to be a human vending machine that somebody puts $500 into and you spit out a bunch of instructions. I mean, maybe that's not that doesn't work in my world. That's not how I define good coaching or good therapy. So you also have to have humility. I taught a class, Humility for Healers. And I so loved how it played out. I wouldn't, it was not uh, what I in initially intended it to be. Because what happened is the people who came to the class had humility. <laughs> they had the beautiful humility to know that there was always more to learn. And the people I thought, wow, you really need a hefty dose of humility. Of course, they don't sign up. <laughs> they don't see it. So I probably won't do that class again. And I really loved it because it felt like, you know, it was several weeks of talking to um, the most beautiful, <laughs> wonderful, dynamic women. It was great. Um, so you have to check yourself. You have to have enough humility to say, maybe I don't know enough. Maybe there's more that I could learn. Maybe if my business isn't growing, it's because I need to grow some more. Because I need to do some more training because I need to work on my own confidence and what I'm projecting out in the world. So anyone is legally allowed to call themselves a coach. Seriously, you can slap a life coach tag on your dog. Your dog is allowed to be a coach. And honestly, dogs make better coaches than the $25 program is churning out, I'm guessing. But if you have an ethical bone in your body and any kind of sense of personal integrity... Go get your $25 certification if you want to and then invest in a mentorship and expect to spend thousands of dollars. Or call yourself an advice giver. Did you know you can hire people to just talk to you and give advice? A lot of times that's sex phone calls. <laughs> or sex industry workers say most of the time they're just giving advice. Uh, but some card readers are advice givers. You're paying them for a reading and to get a sense of where you are and what you might be missing, and they give you advice. Fair enough. That's cool. I've God, I've done that lots of times. But label it as it is. It's not coaching. It's advice giving. It's not guiding someone to their own awareness, their own um, it's not guiding and teaching someone how to access their own awareness and their own wisdom. It's handing out advice and then being done. Even if the person's coming for their advice giving session once a week, it's still not coaching. It's bunk. It's a rip off. Um, and it offends my sense of justice and fairness. It's not right in my world to tell people, hey, give me some of your chump change and I'm going to give you a bunk certificate here. I'm going to treat you like a chump and give you a certificate that has absolutely no meaning. 
You don't need a certificate to be a coach. Save your $25. Apply that towards some mentorship or some good books. Go watch uh, videos on solutions-focused therapy or brief counseling, which to me is really more coaching. I, I know a lot of people would disagree with me, but to me that's, you know, way more coaching than therapy. The world needs more coaches. Absolutely. I don't believe the world needs more therapists. I do believe the world needs more therapists who are highly specialized in trauma. Because trauma is at the heart of addiction. So you don't even have to specialize in both like I did. You could focus just on trauma and then addictions take care of themselves as a side effect. And I think coaches should be trauma-informed so that they know when they've crossed over from coaching land to, holy shit, this person has some unresolved trauma, you need to go see a therapist, go find this kind of therapist, be expect, you know, expect to pay some money for it, but you're, you're going to turn your entire life around when you resolve that trauma. And then work on your own trauma. When you have a client and you want to dive right in with them because their story matches your story, you've got to be aware of that. It's going to happen. So you have to be aware and skilled in holding space while someone repeats your own story back to you fresh in the pain of it or fresh in the awareness of it or really getting it and waking up from their own victimhood. You've got to be able to feel your feelings and hold space for them. So don't don't expect that you're never going to cry with a client. Some you're a human being, of course you will. Sometimes they're going to say something and it's going to trigger tears in you or they're going to cry and you're going to cry and you can all of that can happen while you still hold a very strong boundaried space for them. I've had therapists cry with me and it changed everything for me because it really validated that, oh yeah, this pain is real. Oh yeah, I'm not making this up. This really does hurt. (laughs) This really is shitty. (laughs) So, thank God you want to be a coach. Thank God you have a heart that wants to help. And I encourage you to really explore how you train for that. Lots of good places you can go. Martha Beck has a school. Brooke Castillo has a school. They're expensive. And I'm quite sure they're worth every penny. You're going to pay for it just like you would any other career. The nice thing is you get out on the other side and you aren't paying the state forever and ever and ever and ever for continuing ed, (laughs) although you should be doing your continuing ed. You shouldn't have to be told or regulated to educate yourself your entire career. Please don't pay $25 for a life coach certificate. If you're going to do that, just hang out your shingle and call yourself a coach. Go get a cheeseburger at Texas Roadhouse or something for 25 bucks. (laughs) Because it'll taste a lot better than eating that certificate. Um, So yeah, if you have been calling yourself a coach and things aren't going as well as you'd like or your clients aren't making the progress you would like to see, I can help you with that. I've mentored loads of people. I'm probably hundreds by now. You can um, find everything I do at thatmichellewolf.com. Right now the focus really is on Forest Reiki, human design, some opportunities for some one-on-one individual coaching and mentoring. Um, And then the 10 Minutes to More Money group, which is a uh, learning how to leverage group energy to create your own breakthroughs with regard to money. Create your own breakthroughs. (laughs) Through doing the one command and uh, different kinds of meditations and belief busting for 30 days at a time for 33 
clams. All right, think less, feel more. That said, if you feel you want to be a coach, think about it. All right, I'll talk to you next week.